Hey Rebels, sit back, relax, close your eyes if you want to, while we take you around the world and back again and weave through history. Right now, we've got four stories from our audiobook, Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls, 100 True Life Tales of Black Girl Magic. First up, a circus performer from the 1800s who wowed audiences all over Europe. Read by the actor Samira Wiley. Anna Olga Albertina Brown. Once upon a time in Prussia, now known as Poland, there was a young biracial performer named Anna. Tiny and incredibly strong, Anna joined the circus when she was nine years old. She quickly mastered the tightrope, trapeze, and other daring acts. Under the stage name Miss Lala, Anna dazzled audiences across Europe as an aerialist. In her unforgettable iron jaw act, she used a thick leather strap with a mouthpiece on one end and a hook on the other. She hooked the leather strap to the trapeze and bit down on the mouthpiece. Dangling by her teeth high in the air, she spun and spun. Next, Anna hung from the trapeze by her knees. With the leather strap between her teeth, she supported another trapeze. On it, a child, a woman, a man, and finally, a duo took turns striking poses. She had more moves to shock the crowd. Hanging upside down, dangling by just one knee, she held three men, one in each arm and one supported by her teeth. Then came the grand finale. Anna lifted a brass cannon by a strap held in her mouth. Then, boom, the cannon fired. Her body flew back from the blast. She astounded the audience as she still held up the smoking cannon. The famous French artist Edgar Degas was so captivated by Anna's high-flying act that he painted her. The grace and strength of Europe's first black female circus star was forever captured on canvas. Next up, Broadway star Montego Glover brings us the story of a yoga instructor who hated yoga when she first tried it. Jessamine Stanley. Once there was a girl named Jessamine who was told she was too slow and uncoordinated for team sports. She decided to try a solo activity instead. She signed up for a yoga class. Jessamine was excited at first, but when she walked into the room, she noticed her body was bigger and her skin color was darker than everyone else's. Even worse, the class was hot yoga. The room was set to 105 degrees. Sweaty and frustrated by how hard it was to bend, stretch, and balance in poses she'd never seen before, she gave up and left. Years later, when Jessamine was in graduate school, a friend invited her to a yoga class. Absolutely not, Jessamine said. She was certain yoga was not for her. But her friend pushed her to get out of her comfort zone. This time, Jessamine loved it. Many of the poses were still challenging for her, but she made it to the end of the class and felt proud. From that day on, Jessamine stopped saying she couldn't do difficult things. Instead, she told herself she was strong and powerful. Practicing yoga with this positive outlook helped her embrace her body and feel more confident. Jessamine studied yoga for years and mastered the poses she once found difficult. She became a nurturing teacher who encourages people of every background and body shape to try yoga. And now, Rebels, 
the story of an activist who fought hard for the rights of women in her homeland of Nigeria. This one is read by television actor Levy Simone. Funmalayo Ransom Kuti. Francis Abigail Olu Funmalayo lived in a land called Abeo Kuta, now part of Nigeria. Most girls there could not get an education, but Francis's parents enrolled her in a boys only high school. She was the first girl to join. At 19, Francis went to England to finish her studies. When she returned, she asked everyone to use her African name, Funmalayo. Funmalayo believed women should be empowered and independent. She was the first woman in Nigeria to drive a car. She started a club to teach women how to read, sew, and cook. All types of women joined. When she learned that the government was treating the women who worked in the market unfairly, she rallied them together to fight for their rights. The club she created became a union. and it swelled from a couple hundred women to 20,000. Fun Malayo trained union members in secret, disguising meetings as picnics or festivals. Together, thousands of women demanded lower taxes and the right to vote. Abeo Kuta was ruled by a local king under a British colonial government. Fun Malayo and her union marched in front of the king's palace singing and chanting. Finally, After two years, the king gave up his throne, and the government met the woman's demands. Funmalayo then fought for independence from British rule, and her union grew even stronger. She took an executive position in a political party and traveled all over the world, using her quick wit and bold words to advocate for Nigerian women's rights. Finally, rebels. Actor Garcelle Bove reads us the story of a basketball star who made history. Lisa Leslie. Once there was a left-handed girl named Lisa, who was taller than her second-grade teacher. Kids called her names, but her mother encouraged her to be proud of her height. Everyone asked Lisa if she played basketball. She hated that question, but she wanted to fit in. So she decided to try it out. Soon she learned to dribble and shoot right-handed like everyone else. Lisa kept training and became so good that more than a hundred colleges reached out to her, even before she started high school. The key to becoming a champion, she said, was setting goals. She wrote down her objectives and pinned them all over the house. After thriving on the college courts, Lisa set her sights on the Olympics. Sadly, opportunities for women were limited. Men could play in the National Basketball Association (NBA), but there wasn't a U.S. women's league yet. So Lisa played in Italy before earning her spot on the U.S. Olympic team. In 1996. She won a gold medal at her first Olympic Games. That same year, the NBA created a women's league, the WNBA, and Lisa joined the LA Sparks in 1997. Five years later, in front of cheering fans, Lisa caught a long pass and charged toward the basket. The announcer cried, "What is she going to do?" Just then. She made history as the first woman at a WNBA game to slam dunk. She won three Most Valuable Player awards and three more Olympic gold medals. Then, after 12 seasons, Lisa retired from basketball. She finished her business degree and returned to the Sparks as an owner. That's it for now, rebels. This podcast is a production of Rebel Girls. It's based on the book series "Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls." The story was produced by Robin Lai with sound design and mixing by Robin Lai. It was written by Katie Spranger and Erica Durham. Fact checking by Joe Radigan. Narration by Erica Durham. 
Original theme music was composed and performed by Elettra Bargiacchi. Thank you to the whole Rebel Girls team who make this podcast possible. Stay Rebel.